Okay. I think we're at a point that I'm going to go ahead and just say hello to everyone who might be on here. I know that we have some people that will be logging in soon. So if you happen to join us partway through, uh, just, just jump right in the conversation. If it's your first time using Zuby Live, welcome. Um, really excited to have you. There's actually, if you look down in this corner right here, there's a little uh, chat button. You can actually talk to me live. I'll be able to read your comments, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to making this a full conversation tonight, not really just about me. I really want uh, you guys, if there's anything you want to add or contribute, especially if you're a Gaucher patient or um, a stakeholder as far as like a, a, uh, a doctor or a family member who of uh, a patient who has Gaucher disease, um, tonight will be specifically about Gaucher type one. Uh, and we're looking forward to extending the, the conversation into the next week when we'll talk about types two and three. And I know that that was something even uh, type one patients really wanted to learn more about was type two and type three. Um, if this is your first time here, again, welcome. My name is Leanna Mullen. I am a TV station manager at Egg Harbor Township School District. And um, uh, the funny thing I find about this is uh, me doing live on camera stuff. The students that I work with never see me do live anything on camera, anything. So um, they're really going to kick out of this, I'm sure. Um, but anyway, uh, so I wanted to start this so that way there was a platform for rare diseases because there are so many rare diseases and most rare diseases don't know about the other rare disease or what they do know is very surface level kind of things. So I'm hoping that um, this broadcast uh, actually takes off and we do well with it. And maybe the, we'll have a chance to do more rare diseases um, outside of Gaucher and uh, feature some of you guys. So if you happen to know someone who has a rare disease or some other advocate, that would be great for our program. Um, please let me know. And again, you can either talk to me in this little chat box down here, um, or if you're more of a Twitter person, feel free to uh, use hashtag rare15chat, and that'll go not only just during this uh, broadcast, but it'll actually continue um, afterward too. So, Gaucher disease. Um, it is a, a rare genetic disorder. Uh, I can say that because I'm one of the people with Gaucher disease. Um, and uh, it's typically an Ashkenazi Jewish disorder, which is interesting, too, because I'm, as far as I know, there's no one in our immediate background that, that is Jewish. But, you know, that whole hierarchy of, of going back in time, that's very possible that some, somewhere back there, um, I have that trait. I'm just not aware of it, uh, mostly Italian. Um, but anyway, uh, Gaucher disease can do a lot of different things. What, but what it comes down to is it's actually a bone disease, which I didn't hear that term until just recently. So um, it being a bone disease, it, it really is, it can be very debilitating. I'm very, very fortunate that it was caught when I was a teenager um, and I was able to receive treatment for it. And as a result of that, I'm able to talk to you guys right now. Um, and again, if you happen to be a patient and you wanna share some of the story, I'd be happy to uh, reiterate to anybody else who's listening uh, how they were diagnosed. But for me, um, it, I started having symptoms from the time I was about three years old and it took well over a decade to actually figure out that that's what it was, especially because it wasn't in my family. Um, it is a, a rare genetic disorder, but it's also a um, autosomal recessive disorder. So that means but both your parents have to be at least carriers if they don't actually have the disease themselves, which is what happened to me. I just got lucky, I guess. And um, uh, my, both my parents carried it. My sister, who um, I think is actually listening tonight, so hi, Sue. Uh, she she doesn't have Gaucher, but she's most likely a carrier. And um, uh, to go back to what it actually can do. So Gaucher um, is a lysosomal storage disorder. And basically, the way it was explained to me is that your, your cell is like a recycling center. And it kind of just knows how to process things and whatever uh, lipids might happen to be in there, it knows to break it down. And it just, you know, it's a, it's a well-functioning waste management program. Um, but then what ends up happening is, uh, so I'm, I'm missing a certain enzyme where I'm lacking at least enough to do anything worthwhile. So as a result, that waste management process center can't process efficiently and the cells actually expand. So your spleen can be enlarged, your liver can be enlarged. Um, and when it comes to it being a bone disease, it actually can eat away at the bone marrow um, and make your bones really brittle. For some people, I've met people who needed several hip replacements, knee replacements. Um, I've been told that some people can be bad enough that they can walk down the street and break a leg. Like that's how brittle they can be. 
Um, there was a period of time when I was not on treatment uh, and I um, actually was in a wheelchair for a short period of time. Uh, just just the, the bone pain can be really, really difficult. And you can talk to any Gaucher patient, you'll get a completely different story. And I'm actually gonna check to see if we have any Gaucher people on here. Um, and uh, not um, if, if you happen to have Gaucher, just uh, let me know, just kind of give a, uh, a little comment down at the bottom and we'll, we'll get back to some, what some of you say. Um, somebody had asked if I was actually misdiagnosed and actually I was, or oh, nearly was. Um, I found out I had a whole bunch of other things like I had factor 12 deficiency, I had S2 protein deficiency. Um, they thought I had Von Willebrand's disease. Um, and then they were about to rule out leukemia and it was really looking like leukemia was not good. Um, but because I had a bone marrow biopsy when I was 14, 15, that's when they figured out that I was Gaucher. Um, you actually don't need a bone marrow biopsy to figure out you have Gaucher. It can just be a blood test. Um, but that's, that's how it worked for me. And th that is, um, it is a, something that you can get um, prenatal testing for as well. Uh, it's, it's common enough, especially if you have a Jewish background that it's highly recommended that you find that out if it's in your family. So, um, but I was lucky enough that it what I didn't get misdiagnosed so badly that I missed out on treatment because uh, treatment was relatively new at the time that um, I was diagnosed. It was the mid two thousands. And, and at that time, there, from, to my knowledge, you'll have to excuse me, I'm not an expert on what uh, pharmaceutical um, drugs were available, but in my understanding, there was really one main um, IV treatment and I continue to be on that IV treatment today. And, um, you know, for me, it's worked out really well. Um, I get a treatment every two weeks, uh, at Cooper university hospital. And, um, the one really cool thing I found with Gaucher is that there's this really neat network of people. Um, uh, I, I happen to be on the Facebook page with Gaucher. Um, there's a, a community of about 1200 people across the world that have it. And that, well, it's actually more than that, but at least the, those are the ones on Facebook. Um, in addition, uh, I actually, uh, talked today with, uh, Anne Marie who runs a uh, Gaucher chat and she was really excited about our program and mentioned that she'd give us a little shout on her website. I said, I'd do the same. So if you happen to have Gaucher or family member that does make sure you check out her website because she's got that up and running. Um, and I guess, uh, you know, I really just wanted to see if there's anybody out there. Um, I can, you know, we, we talk all, all the time on Facebook, but I just wanted to see if we can get people have a conversation on here and, and get them introduced to what uh, Zubia has to offer with all their other live programs and maybe see if we can go into um, doing other rare diseases depending on on what the interest is out there. So um, just continue to check my comments and um, hold on one second. Uh, <laughs> you'll have to excuse me, I'm a, a little bit of a slow reader when I'm trying to get to the comments. Um, so Ed had asked, uh, her had mentioned that he has a daughter with a uh, rare disease, um, but, uh, was, uh, in, in relation to Gaucher doesn't impact the spine as far as I know. Actually for me, it is in my lower back a little bit. Um, but as far as the bone marrow progression, I'm not that bad. So I know it's back there. Um, and I know it, it could be degener degenerative. My words are not good. Um, but for some people, again, it, it, it can be really debilitating. Um, and other people, you would never know. They don't find out until they're like in their 60s. It's like, oh, well, you know, that's, I lived this long, it's fine. Um, but for others, you know, it, especially when we talk about type two and type three next week, you, you can learn how uh, really that can be a very rough diagnosis for a family because neurologic um, symptoms are also present for that. Um, so I, I feel like I've rambled a little bit. So if you have any specific questions about Gaucher, or if you happen to have a Gaucher story you want to share, feel free to, uh, give me a message on there. Or again, if you happen to catch this afterward, if, uh, after it's recorded, if you want to, uh, continue the conversation with Twitter, we're going to use the hashtag rare 15 chat. So I can see, you know, kind of what the engagement is and see, if, uh, what the interest is in doing more about this. Um, so one of the ways that they used to treat Gaucher was actually by taking out the spleen. They figured, well, if that's like the first organ to quote unquote go, then maybe we should just take it out of the way and there won't be anywhere for it to kind of build up. Um, but for a lot, actually, that ended up being a really bad idea because then that organ wasn't kind of like the sacrificial lamb anymore. So it would then move on to the other organs and the bones faster because 
it didn't have the spleen to go into. And for me, my spleen uh, at its worst, as far as I'm aware, was seven times larger than it's supposed to be. So it was like, your spleen's supposed to be between 80 and 100 and so cc's. Mine was like over 700. So it was like, whew, big spleen. Same with my liver. My liver's also enlarged. And um, the by getting some sort of treatment, and there are several available. If you have questions, I definitely recommend you talk to a doctor, I'm not like medically certified in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but as someone who has been on treatment, I can tell you that it, it has definitely um, helped subside my symptoms. And also the progression has incredibly slowed down. So I can't imagine where I'd be right now if I wasn't on treatment. Um, and uh, I would definitely say if, if you're a go-shape person and, you, and you're not really happy with your treatment plan, make sure you talk to a doctor, reach out to someone. Um, and if you don't feel like you have a, a medical provider that's working in your best interest, there's a network of people, especially with the National go Shape Foundation. They were incredibly helpful with me in different parts of my go Shape journey, as I call it. And I really recommend you reach out to them because they, they know people in the industry. They can, they can reach out to their, their team of experts. Let's see who else we got here. Um, can it get worse is another follow-up question. It absolutely could. Uh, again, I'd like to say that because I am on treatment, it seems like it's not going to be that bad for me, or at least not. At this point, I, I'm, I'm very healthy other than the fact that I need to start working out more just because that's that's me and I need to start doing that. And eating healthy would probably be a good idea, but we all get to do that. Um, and as long as I'm on treatment, you know, it, it is uh, relatively well managed. And um, uh, Susan had asked if um, I've considered home treatment. Actually, I, I've been back and forth on home treatment, hopefully in another month or so. I'll be back on home treatment again. I've been really looking forward to that. I've had some side effects with my um, infusion, and as a result, I need to go back to the hospital. And that's something I've had to do kind of, it feels like maybe every other year, I end up going through this weird pattern where I need to go back to the hospital for about six months or so. Uh, but then I come back home for a year, and it's great. I wake up on Saturday morning, my nurse shows up, she mixes my medication, we just kind of chill for like three or four hours, and, uh, and that's how my, my Saturday is going. And for me, I'm not complaining because I, you know, I'd rather eat up uh, every other weekend doing a treatment than, than dealing with the side effects, you know, the rest of the two weeks. So that's uh, definitely reasonable for me. Um, I don't want to go too far over on time. We're already at about 8.14 and I, I do want to keep this to about 15 minutes. So um, if you guys have any other questions or you do want to continue the Gaucher discussion, I feel like I didn't get to touch on everything I wanted to talk about. So um, we can continue this after our type three, two and three discussion next week. If you do want to learn more about Gaucher, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, check out the um, Gaucher chat website, too. That's a really great resource with the National Gaucher Foundation being another one. And um, uh, subscribe to the next one. I really hope you'll, you'll continue joining us. And if you have any uh, recommendations or questions for me, feel free to reach out. There's uh, the contact that you can get to me. Um, uh, my email address is on Zubia Live's website or on the app. So feel free to get in touch with me that way. And other than that, thanks for tuning in, guys, and I'll uh, hear from you next time. Thanks so much.